give everyone just a couple of seconds. Oh, thanks, Yala. Uh, we'll give everyone a couple of seconds to join on. I'm sure we'll get a few more coming through as we go as well. Um, but thank you all for joining us this evening. Welcome to everyone there still just tuning in as well. Um, appreciate, as always, you all coming online, joining us for our Thornbridge Beer Club tasting evening. Uh, we've got quite a crowd with us today. Um, for those who may be new to joining us, uh, my name's James. I'm the export manager at Thornbridge Brewery. We've got Russell, our taproom manager. Charlotte, our social media coordinator, who's looking after the Zoom this evening. Uh, just by Dom there, our sales and marketing director as well. Uh, and we're very lucky to be joined by, we've got Jim O'Hara, who's joining us from, you know, to talk all things Kellam Island, actually joining us from near Glastonbury. So thank you for taking the time out there, Jim. Um, and then Wilf as well. So uh, from Salopian Brewery. So we've got a couple of people joining us, talking through all things beer and everything related as well. We've got the chat as always. So please feel free, pop any questions you've got in there. We'll as always, try and get to as many as possible. But please, the more questions, the better. It's always nice to uh, get feedback. Let us know how you're enjoying the beers, what your favorite beers of the month are, any questions for the guys we have on as well this evening too. Um, always nice to keep that color going as well there too. But as always, I know people are going to be getting thirsty. So um, without further ado, let's tuck in. And uh, Jim, if you don't mind talking us through uh, some Pale Rider, please. No, yeah, I'd love to. Um, so I guess first it would be probably worth going through why are you drinking a Callum Island beer in your Farmbridge box, I guess. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So about a year ago, just over a year ago now, like everyone, myself, um, Simon, Jim, everyone at Thornbridge really, we saw the news that Callum Island Brewery was, um, going into liquidation and was going to cease to exist. Um, when I saw the news, I sort of met a a beeline for the fat cat and sat and had what I thought were going to be the last few pints of Pale Rider that I'd ever have when I sat in the beer garden. And after maybe three or four rather than two, I had the I had the thought that there must be something that a few of us can do in, in a city like Sheffield to make sure that that, that that beer doesn't disappear, really. And I think um, many of you will know the history of it and hopefully some of you also know the history and of the combined history of Thornbridge and Callum Island Brewery, which I knew a little of, but I knew a lot more when I called Simon from the car park of the Fat Cat pacing up and down after probably the fifth pint of Pale Rider at this point, um, asking him kind of what his experiences were with the founder, Dave Wickett. And then one of the startling things that came uh that I found out that day was that actually the first beers brewed up at Thornbridge Hall weren't Thornbridge beers, they were Kellam Island beers. Because in 2004, when um, the brewery was being set up and when Pale Rider had just won uh, Championship Beer of Britain, Dave Wickett got some orders the week after it got Championship Beer of Britain that were, let's say, a bit startling for a small brewery in Sheffield. So Simon and Jim jumped on board and I think the first beer, it's my understanding, the first beer brewed up there was uh kellum gold i think um and for quite a while they brewed um beers on behalf of dave because he was so busy with, with pale rider and that connection between those guys was always there i guess and um so yeah about a year ago we decided to kind of try and um try and rescue the brand really we did know that what we would have to do is brew it elsewhere now the obvious place was was thornbridge given the historical ties their relationship with dave the brewery itself wasn't part of the sale and couldn't be rescued, um, which is sad, but hopefully that brewery in Kenham Island will become something else, um, uh, which would be really good for the area. Um, but yeah, it's been really exciting since then. I think everyone at Thornbridge was really excited. Rob and the brewery team were excited to, to brew Pale Rider. And I think the first time we went up there, it was brewed on the old kit as well. So it was brewed on the first kit that was up in the... Um, that was up in the brewery all those years ago when they first brewed the Kellum beers. So it was a really nice kind of circle there to end on in that the first new brew of Pale Rider was brewed on the exact same kit that the guys were brewing uh, Kellum Island beers on all those years years ago. Now, what you're drinking, obviously, the bottled version, which we were really excited about. And I think what's what's aligned really well is, is 
Thornbridge has kind of moved to 500 mil again because I think that really works for for Pale Rider, even though it is 5.2%. Um, but I think the bottle conditioning has 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 made it taste amazing, and I think it's certainly the best bottled version of Pale Rider I've had um, in all the years I've been drinking it. And um, and I hope you guys think the same. Um, yeah, I've got. I mean, I've. I've been drinking it a lot during the the hot weather, and I think it's a someone has just put on someone put this lovely summer beer. I agree, yeah. I think it's really been drinking it with a lot of barbecues. I think it goes really well with that sort of stuff. It's, um, I mean, it is a deceptive beer. I think people people who are fans of it will tell you that it doesn't necessarily taste as strong as it as strong as it is. Um, so you do have to be slightly careful with it. But um, but yeah, I think I think it's a fantastic beer. We're really proud of it. You will notice all the new branding, which was another decision we decided to make. When we took on um, Cannon Island Brewery, it was on about its fourth rebrand, I think, and a really good local artist in Sheffield had done the last one, Jim Connolly. Um, but we just decided to go our own way with it and used uh, a company called Peter and Paul, for those that are interested in the branding side of stuff, who are based in Cannon Island. In fact, their office is about 100 yards from the original brewery, so that also felt, felt quite apt. Um, yeah, so you're drinking the kind of new bottled conditioned version of Pale Rider. Um, and I think it's as uh, as good a bottled version of it I've ever had. And um, yeah, if anyone has got any other questions about Callum Island, uh, Pale Rider, what our kind of future plans are, I probably will be able to say a little bit about that. Um, and maybe people who come to Peak Ender will have a nice surprise. Um, yeah, any questions, let me know. Yeah, I mean, if you've got any sort of uh, little things you could tease about the future, it's always, uh, you know, there's an excited crowd for anything, Thornbridge and Pale Rider and Callum. Okay. There will be another beer being launched at Pekanda. That's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a good teaser for anyone who's uh, not got tickets yet either, of course. It's uh, it's time to, to mention that as well. But, yeah, thank you for... Uh, that as you say it's been a fantastic journey with Kellum and uh, with Pale Rider as well the feedback for the new bottle condition beers has been great and even from the first cast we were pouring out as you mentioned from the um from the kit itself the old kit that we worked as well so um yeah it's been a really good thing I mean you know you mentioned the history of Thornbridge and Kellum Island even for myself Dave Wickett opened a who was the owner of Kellam Island, opened a pub in the USA. I worked there for a year, and uh, part of my beer journey and being here today was the opportunity that Dave Wickett gave to me and lots of other students in Sheffield um, as well. So he was, uh, yeah, did a lot to influence beer and everything around it. Um, sorry, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, you did. And you're definitely not the only one, I think. Tom Clay at Stone and Fred and Stone as well. I think lots yeah. of people kind of owe Dave a lot, really, in the industry. And I think um, he was quite the inspirational man. So a big part of it was to making sure that that legacy carried on. And I'm really pleased we were able to do that. It's great. Yeah, no, for sure. He's uh, We lived together for a little while in the US, Tom and I, and um, so know him well. But yeah, him and uh, myself and many others owe it to, to him too. So, um, And then Dom mentioned there, uh, yeah, about um hence the modern pale ale branding making it vegan to there as well um yes, Dave, was Dave was a vegetarian, like famously a vegetarian Dave mm -hmm. yeah like, yeah so one of the changes we did make was making it vegan but we're pretty convinced that had the vegan farming existed then he, he would have done the same so we were really pleased to do that yeah definitely um just a nice extra part really for it as you say continuing that legacy there as well uh, Steve had a mini keg last year at Christmas. God's here now on Christmas Eve as well. That's a perfect time for it too. Um, yeah, those went very well as well. It's been nice to start making those sorts of formats and especially now in bottle as well. Uh, retail as well. Um, at the moment, you can get it in. I mean, if you're in Sheffield, you can get it from uh, Morrison stores in Sheffield as well. Um, and of course, through our online shop. So for anything a bit further afield, there's you all well know from being in Beer Club, it is going to stay in the online shop that we have too. So, um, But you will see kegs going out and about as we've got around Sheffield for some events too uh, and casks making it a bit further afield as well. So um, we had some casks pouring in Italy and Finland uh, as well. So we've had some excitement for it from far and away places too where it's been pouring and going down very nicely. 
Um, and so, yeah, I mean, was there anything else you fancied uh, telling us as well, Jim, while we have you, while we've got the chance? Um, I know you mentioned stuff coming up. Pekenda, are you coming to Pekenda as well? I hope so. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. Um, yeah, so we've, we've done a few things recently. We, we were serving it at the uh, Arctic Monkeys gigs last, when was that, two weeks ago in Sheffield, because uh, they were big fans of the beer, um, Pale Rider. And um, so that was a real, a really nice thing. It'll also be available at Tramlines in Sheffield, the music festival uh in the city um and yeah i think you're gonna see like you said it is getting out there which is really encouraging to see um you know i think some of the some of the sales outside sheffield maybe took us a little bit by surprise i think but it just shows you what reach the beer did have a thing um you know we put um the houston tap in london did four casks in four days which was a bit eye-opening it was a bit it was kind of startling but um really encouraging and i think it just shows you know it's a really good product. It always has been. And I think, um, I think, yeah, being able to carry it on with these small tweaks to sort of modernize it that little bit um, just kind of shows you that, you know, a classic beer is a classic beer. And, and I think um, hopefully it's got, a, it's got a, a vibrant future and people will see it far and wide. Yeah, I think so. Actually, um, the minute we, we put it on socials and our importer in Italy texted me straight away, he sent me photos of it and he was like, you've got this, I have to have casks. Uh, and then he sent me a picture about 6 a.m., uh, 6 p.m. one evening from a pub in Veneto where they had it pouring. Uh, and then he sent me a picture about, I think it must have been half 12 and the ca cask had just finished. So um, they've been doing it some good justice uh, when it's been traveling as well. So, which is always very nice to see um but yeah so again thank you jim i know uh, appreciate you on the road as well and uh and everything so thank you for taking the time to talk to us this evening my pleasure i'm going to stick around and listen you, you're keeping me away from glastonbury for one night which is not necessarily a bad thing i think um three nights will be plenty yeah that's fair well uh yeah thank you and again so with jim sticking around if anyone has any questions please keep popping them in the chat there as well and um, we'll make sure we answer everything too um but that was uh, of course we've got five beers in we've got a great range of stuff this is a fantastic starter for us especially that nice bottle condition there as well um but we also have of course wilf here from salopi and he's come to join us um we brewed our cash pour together but wilf um i mean you've been with salopi in a while now you know everything about it so please uh you know the guys in here are all big beer fans they all know it but it's always great to hear a little more about the brewery too. So please tell us all about it. Well, yeah, there's there's quite a lot to tell. I think we predate um, Thornbridge by a little bit. I mean, I think Solopian started in 1995 and we were the smallest standalone brewery in the country at that stage. The, I think our brew length was princely three and a half hectolitres, which we had to sell to make a living. We didn't have a pub. Uh, wow. But before I go any further, I just say, yeah, well done to Thornbridge for keeping the pale the inspiration to us all and when you seeing pale rider win champion beer of britain back in when was it jim Two, 2000 2004 2004 yeah and something i've aspired to ever since and failed to do come come third twice but yeah not not quite good enough but um, anyway, yeah, back back to us. I think you know, rather than go through the, so I'm the the dinosaur at Salopian. I've been there since 19. The brewery started in 1995, and I've been there since 1998. And I think it's probably more interesting to look at how the brewery's developed and how it comes to be brewing a beer like Cash Cashball with um, with Thornbridge. And we we'd um, been a uh, a, a fairly standard midland style brewery and you know up until about 2008 by when by that i mean that it was the, the beers were not hop led they were fairly you know standard small brewers beers at the time in the midland style so generally light in color light in color um we used mainly english and uh, uh continental hops you know, styrian goldings and the like um and you know i'd always like to think the beers were well made but they weren't overly exciting but they were brewed to the market we were selling in um, and then it, it it came to about 2008, and I was lucky enough to have Jake Douglas join the company, and he was one of the founder members of um, uh, Oakham Brewery, and um, he he came to work for us in 2008, 
and uh, Jake was a very persuasive man. And whilst I was quite stuck in my ways and I don't really like to leave the Shire and I have hair growing on my toes and all the rest of it, he, he wasn't like that. And he wanted, he, he loved hops and he wanted us to, to take that on at Salopian. So he used to take me down to the pub. And I think I've, the, the, the first time he took me to one of our local pubs that was had a good selection of more modern star beers. And this would have been like 2008, 2009. We had Hophead, which was on serious form, and uh, I enjoyed that. And then we uh, tried various other ones, and after a while, it was yeah, let's let's try doing this ourselves. And 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 at that stage, you know, one of the the few sensible business decisions I ever made was worked out that that was what the market wanted. That it didn't really want any more um, traditional. Well, actually, that's not quite true. There is still obviously a market for traditional malt led beer in this country but what was going to be vibrant and interesting and fun to do was to to embrace the more modern style of of, uh, of beer that people like um oakham were making and i think by that stage Fort thornbridge were going by then as well weren't they i think when did when did thornbridge start 2005 2005 yeah yeah that's what i thought yeah so yeah so we 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 gradually whilst most of our range kept the same name they all gradually became Oakamized, if you like, for want of a better term. Um, and in that time, I also got a lot of input from from various other brewers around the country. I was discussing, you know, brewing techniques with people like Dark Star and um, and um, Crash Fail, and um, and just basically, you know, talk to them and then steal their ideas. It was, you know, to, you know I was I was quite good at assimilating, so assimilating what other people did. So in our brewery, there would be we'd be using hot teas. But we'd also be using big recirculations as well, just to try and get the most out of the hops. And and uh, at that stage, it was all quite awkward. And I've, I've continued to make it awkward for us because we were uh, we were using solely hop um, hop cones, hop flowers. And to a degree, that is what we still do. I rebuilt the brewery in 2014, and and I think probably after um, St Austell is the next biggest brewery in the country that still uses almost entirely. Uh, hop cones though obviously we do do a certain amount you know, do quite a lot of dry hopping now but on the hot side it's nearly all hop cones um so we 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 carried on doing that and and changing the style of the beers that we made and then it's interesting doing having brewed cash ball with with um with thornbridge because obviously it's a it's a mashup of cashmere and jaipur um, and they're similar beers in style. I mean, Cashmere's 5.5, Jaipur at 5.9, I think. Yeah. Um, and it, it did amaze me, actually, when I saw the hop crisp for, for Jaipur, which is about 10 different hops. And that's my style normally. I'll normally have at least three, if not four different hops in a, in a hop crisp. Uh, Cashmere is quite unusual, and it's it's 100%, um, it's 100% citra. So it was when Citra first came out, the new Wonder Hop. We were we were looking at how to use it. We we originally were contemplating having Oracle, which is our sort of flagship uh, session IPA bitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, was originally we were looking at doing that as as a hundred percent Citra. But when it was so young and vibrant, there was a delightful aroma and slight flavor of cat's pee in it a bit like you get from Sauvignon Blanc and I didn't and I thought I didn't fancy that that much and and I've always got in the back of my mind that it, it, you know hops vary from year to year and you in my view you're better off having a having a, a multi-hop grist so that you can vary it um, each year to, to to produce the beer that you want and it's interesting with what Jim said about Pale Rider and you know the tweaks that have been made to that to improve it and I was lucky enough to have some at um, the Great British Beer Fest uh, Great British Winter Beer Festival at Burton this year and I, I was blown away by it I thought compared to compare it was always a good beer but it was so much better it, 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 it had been tweaked and it's and 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 for the better and I, and I always think that in brewing it's an interesting thing where people will you know, will talk about a beer and say Oh, you know, that beer's not as good as it was. They've changed the recipe. And so often it's because they haven't changed the recipe that it's not as good as it was because you're using live ingredients and they change every year and, and you need to stay on top of that. And if that means completely changing the hop that you use or changing the malt, or, you know, sometimes there's something as as wild as potentially changing the yeast, then to, to try and get consistency, you uh, you have to do that. Um 
and it's also actually interesting to me you know looking at and i think you know going back to nods to to uh, breweries that that jaipur uh, for, for you know for us breweries that were there prior to the craft beer revolution was pretty much one of the first um craft beers to my mind brewed in this country if you know if your definition of a craft beer was not what it's become which means any small brewery it was a beer that was vibrant and interesting frequently at that time then you know, had you know, lots of american hops in and it was it was a follow-on to my mind of um uh, of what was happening in the states and i think the first wild widely available beer at that stage was um jaipur and you could say that it's no surprise or it's not what was the, how could i put this is that when we started brewing cashman i was just trying to remind myself of when we did and i think it was probably about 2011 something like that so sometime after jaipur there was you know the, the style of beer and the name there was a little bit of a a, a nod to thornbridge but also maybe a little prod as well <laughs> but uh it was distinct it was a distinct follow-on and you can see that in the style of both beers and i think that this this collaborations work very well i think it brings out the you know brings out the best of both beers uh, even if there aren't 10 different hot varieties in it um but the other thing that Actually, I do find interesting, and going back to what Jim said about Pale Rider and what I've just said about it as well, is how I think um, our perception, not our perception, but how our, our, our palates have changed over the period, over the last 10, 15 years of you know, in the change of the way that so many British breweries have made their beers. And we went through you know, the, 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 the more is more revolution where everybody had to be putting more and more hops into their beers. Um, and I think the, the, there's dis distinctly to me the, the chilli effect in beers of this like now where, you know, if you eat, if you're very keen on chilli, the more you eat, the more you need to get the same effect. And I think there is that with hops as well. So I think you could drink this beer now and, and go, Oh God, I can remember it 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and it was so much hoppier. And I'd be very surprised if it was. I'd, I'd be very surprised. And that what has changed is that you know, now with the advent of, you know, I'm sure you know it, um, Thornbridge as well, of brewing Nipers and, and Session Nipers indeed, and um, Pales and DDHs, they're, they're, some of those beers show the hop so much better because of the way they're actually made but also they just have more hop and then you get used to it and then you come back to something like this and say well that's a bit more restrained and and but i i, I still love the style I, I love the presentation of this as well i think it's a good good it's it's whilst it's not like the cast beer because the the carbonation is higher it's still quite a soft carbonation and i think it gives you that idea of what this product would be like in cask and with salopin is still 90 percent of what we do is cut is cask beer which is a, a bit strange in these funny times um and sometimes we wish it, we could uh, <laughs> develop develop the uh, small pack stuff a bit more but it, it it always we stopped bottling actually from 2002 to 2008 and specifically at 2002 because that's when progressive beer Jeeps came in and i was at the time selling beer to uh, Asda or Safeways or whoever it was and didn't really want to do it and Progressive Beer Duty gave us more money to develop the brewery to make a living and so I could stop selling to them and concentrate on cast beer and when we came back to doing it in 2008 I would have liked to have to have gone for um, bottle conditioned beer and particularly you know once again with what Jim said about Pale Rider if you can get bottle conditioning right which is very difficult to get it really right to put it out into the mass market it is the best presentation for bottle beer because I think it's so much fresher but if you if you don't want to do that there are other ways of doing it and you can still produce something that isn't far off a cask beer and that, that's why I, I'm enjoying this cash pour so much because I think it's 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 verging on doing that and i think it's a super beer and i hope you all enjoy it oh thank you Rob. yeah i appreciate you taking the time to sort of talk through everything as well um talking of cask we've got a message there from mark who visited the tap at bakewell uh had the cash pour on there as well um and so has been enjoying it so far but we've had yeah fantastic reactions to to cash pour already um i mean as you mentioned that that combination i think of putting together our ideas for Jaipur and for Kashmir as well, bringing them in, 
Um, and you do get that instant flavor. I think you you can tell the Jaipur's in there, and then you can also tell with the citra and the additions, the cashmere flavors too. So um, yeah, I'm pleased you've been enjoying that one. And we have had that really, uh, I think that nice rapport there really between the two beers, the two breweries as well. Um, and then Dom has just mentioned there, uh, our Dom has just said a great thing about one of the very few breweries who bridge traditional and craft with a plum. Uh, obviously something we also take great pride in. Uh, Oracle, London Dream, uh, Lemon Dream, Hot Twister and Shropshire Gold, absolutely superb on cask. Um, so yeah, Dom's put some suggestions there in the chat as well for anyone who wants to take any more. But um, yeah, I think in that way, it's, it is right, you know, that modern, that traditional bringing those two together you know not forgetting the roots and uh the things that made beer really great but then taking on all those new bits as you say looking at other people's beers and breweries as well and picking out the best bits almost it certainly uh, helps over time i think create such a catalog of beers like you guys have um have you got anything, uh, one of the questions we always like to know, um, to look out for in the future? Is there anything, um, you know, any new beers coming up, Wilf? Anything you've got brewing at the moment? Any other collabs? Um, we've got a few on the go. I think actually of, of more interest. So, I mean, that's sort of the, you know, the things you just just asked. I've, I've nothing specific at the minute, though, because with the dreaded COVID, I had a whole bunch of stuff lined up. And then for various other reasons, I haven't really got back into sorting out collabs and going to meet people and you know once again i've been hiding in the um hiding in the in the shire um but i suppose for our point of view that the most interesting thing we're looking at is talking about presentation of, of beer our, our core range bottle beer still goes into bottles and it's um and it is um uh, sterile filtered which you know, when I went back into bottling again in 2008, I thought that the market didn't really understand bottle conditioned beer, didn't like the the the, the cloudiness. You know, it's quite funny to, to talk about this, that people did, didn't like the, the poor clarity you were likely to get from a bottle conditioned beer, which is why we went for for um, uh, for sterile filtration. But the, the thing we're working on, and I think the most exciting thing we're about to do is start to look at changing the format of our our core range beers when they go into small packs are the most likely going to, we're going to work to putting those into can but more to the point is coming away from filtration and probably not even looking at um uh using a centrifuge just trying to replicate get that freshness that that you can get with a cask beer and putting it in a can and i think the the, the marketplace i think people are, uh, will be more are more interested in that now and and to get the actual the the flavor as it was intended in that beer in the first place which is through filters is very difficult to do because filters are absolute you know, bastards for for taking all the flavor out of everything so to, to my mind for me that's the most exciting thing that we're doing is is going back to looking at and saying right everything that leaves the brewery not just the gas beer but the small pack beer as well should all in effect, we're trying to try and make it taste the same so you get the same experience from it. Um, but um, yeah. That, but, that um, are you planning to do more than you send your sort of 90, 10 at the moment, cast a small pack? Is, are you going to increase the small pack as you do that then? Well, that that would always be the intention because you know you know having having lockdowns shows us that you know if they shut all the pubs, you haven't got much of a business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Right. I think there's you know as the same for everybody when when in, in lockdown our our small pack business grew and we were selling more of it, but it it with it is something yes without doubt that we'd aspire to uh, and we want to do, but it's just how you do it, and I think it's you know it's it's I've always been one, and whilst I very much backseat in the brewery now and and backseat in the company now, I've never wanted to chase around after supermarkets and, and big retail outlets so it's always been more about developing it quietly and, and supplying specialist outlets and and that takes time yeah oh fair enough it's um as you mentioned i think the market certainly changed more towards i remember a few years ago we did a, a berliner vice we took it to indie man which is a very craft forward beer festival uh and people were bringing it back because it was sour and cloudy <laughs> and that wasn't all that many years ago, you know, right. uh, and now if it's not sour and cloudy, it gets brought back. So it's, um, yeah, it's changed very quickly in those few years, I think. Yeah. Um, I think there's another reason to put in a canning line. So, so, so yeah. yeah, 
So you the, 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 the cloudiness, the, the problem we had actually was that in bottles, if you were trying to make a, say something like Slipstream, which was our, our blood orange IPA, which which is made with blood orange concentrate and real oranges in the hot bag, and all that pectin that comes out of them is really difficult to control. And mm -hmm. in a bottle, I think the first or the second time we brewed it, it came out nice and cloudy. And then after six weeks, the pectin kicked in and, and settled it all out. And instead of cut, you know coming down into a nice fine pack in the bottom of the bottle, it was like baby sick halfway up it. And, and I think we'd have probably in a can just got a, just about got away with that. But in a bottle, you couldn't. And we had to pour all this. It was a fabulous batch of it as well. To pour it all down the tray. Yeah, yeah it's... It is it's tough, but um, but yeah, canning is certainly it gives you more options as well. I think um, we're seeing you know people demand for the five hundred mils. That's why we've gone back into them at three thirty. Still go very well, but um, there's certainly you know good cans as well. The lighter, you know, they keep the uh, sun out completely. All the sort of positives of those two. So it's nice if you can do a couple of different varieties of packaged as well. We found, mm. um, as you say, I'm sure you've seen the same thing there too. Yeah, well, you know, I still like bottling, but I, I think the future is 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 cans. It really is. And I think in, environmentally, you know, it ticks all the correct boxes. I think it's, it just makes more sense. And I think it also makes people concentrate a lot more about their process before that bot. You know, I think you know you, you put stuff through a sterile filter, and you're not so bothered about do. It dissolved oxygen, a uh, spoiler, you know, spoiler, spoilage of the beer. You're putting it in a can and you're not putting it through a, a filter. You've got to be really careful, which will tend to mean that you're going to have a better product at the end of it. Yeah, I think um, it, it happened for us with, you know, we put in our bottling line and then we needed a canning line as well. And Rob, you know, our production director, he spent a long, long time getting it right with the exact canning line. Uh, as you say, you know, we just centrifuge our beers. We want as much flavor as possible, but it does mean you have to be very careful when you're canning, you're keeping all the oxygen out. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so it can certainly appreciate that as well. And um, yeah, something you have to be careful for. Um, just a quick one there as well with the uh, Salopian beers will be on at Peak Ender. So um, and for everyone else as well, come in along to Peak Ender. Come up and say hello to us, of course, but make sure to try the different Slopian beers we'll have on. Um, do you know what you're sending to us yet? I don't know if you've um, sent it over. I've been told, but I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I possibly have as well, but um, we'll I think there's. I think we've got four different ones going, but I, 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 Oracle Perfect. sticks in the mind. I think Lemon Dream sticks in the mind, but I can't remember what the other two. You might be getting a Black Range one. I'm not certain. No. Nice. We'll um, we'll be posting about them anywhere in our socials. So for anyone looking out for it, we'll be mentioning. All the beers that we have across there as well when we're talking about peak ender too um and actually you mentioned about the ones from the pandemic but we were a, a pandemic plan as well a few years back was uh you were on our list you know we were going to do our year of beer with salopian right in there as well very exciting and then of course uh we got three of those into it and uh finished out so i'm glad we were able to come full circle and actually get the beer out and pouring as well and uh give people a yeah. chance to try it. it in the end we ended up putting it into bottle it was yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was in tank when um when yeah. it was struck, and of course we couldn't. It was meant to be a cask beer, and it was it was a it was a a red IPA essentially from yeah. what I remember called Middle Middle. Uh, it was a little, was a little village in Shropshire, and um yeah, it was in tank when COVID struck, so we we had to move pretty sharpish, and we put it into three thirty mil bottles, um and it was I think from memory it was like a kind of six percent ish. Yeah, it was. IPA and it was yeah. absolutely superb. Um, it really was. It was so good in bottle because we ended up we actually bottle conditioned it, um, which is one of the first bottle conditioned beers we'd we'd, we'd done for forever and a day, but in three thirty more bottle and it sold really really well. Mm. I have sold that well. We hardly got any. We I think we sent you about ten cases, Will. For, <laughs> so we, we <laughs> Yeah, that's how it went with the pandemic. I think if beers turned up anywhere, they went very quick to people's houses. Yeah um but yeah so the second one for is there as well so hopefully we'll have some more in the pipeline as we go as well alongside uh, are you coming to be kendy yourself as well wolf yeah i think so yeah brilliant i'll be there all weekend long the team will be there as well so um it'd be nice to catch up over a beer in person as well there. hopefully there'll be a few uh folks on the call joining us too um but yeah, so thank you for talking us through the beer there and a bit of the history and things. Well, it's always very interesting. Um, as I mentioned, appreciate your time and everything too. So we'll 
chat through the next few beers as well. Feel free to hang on. Uh, um, might get some more questions there as well. But of course, we appreciate you taking the time already. So thank you for joining as well. Um, and that leaves us uh, with three other beers in our box as well that we have this month. So um, we'll talk you through those. Of course, Russell as well, who's been uh, looking up and working on these beers too. He's very excited for these ones. And in the middle as well, first off, uh, we have Quiet Storm Solero this month. So uh, the Quiet Storm series continues. It's, we always get demand for it. We get asked for lots of different hops and it's fun to keep playing around. We got those big American ones, British ones with the Goldings we released recently. Uh, but Solero comes from Germany. Uh, a descendant of Cascade. It's gone through a few different varieties. It's in the kind of experimental Hopsteiner program uh, and released back in 2019. So it's been a hop. It's not been around for too long, but it gives you these really great um, sort of basically kind of new world, but done in that fantastic Germanic way. So we wanted to try this one out. We've played around with it in a couple of beers over the last couple of years since it's been out. But this was the first time we've done a single hop with it. And for me, it does give you, it's that like kind of peachy, papyri, lemony on the aroma there as well. You've got that nice soft body you'd expect from the Quiet Storm series. We try and keep them all the same and just let that hop kind of play the big part. You get the nice white head, the great carbonation, especially if you've got your nice Thornbridge nucleated glasses as well. And then, as I mentioned, that sort of peachy papaya, probably a little maybe towards the sort of orangey sharpness as well in there. But um, overall, it does really tend towards that nice, fantastic, uh, as you'd expect, the new world sort of style as well there. But it's been a fun hop for us to play with. And you don't see very many Solero hops, um, you know, that are single hop, any beer, sorry, that are single hop. So it's nice to, to try it out in this format too. As always, there's going to be more quiet storms, more hops coming up. Let us know, you know, your favorite ones of those, what you've thought so far. Um, but yeah, certainly for me, a nice, interesting one. I always enjoy the single hop series. It's nice to kind of try them. And I always have a couple of others in my fridge. So even just try a couple, open them at the same time. Uh, and really kind of sit there and you can really pick them out between you. Um, even, you know, close your eyes if you want to be a fun sort of beer nerd and you can make sure to swap them around and see if you can pick out each one. And it just helps you think a little more about, you know, the beers down the line. If you're in the pub and, oh, OK, I know that hop, that Solero that's been in there as well. Um, ah, Steve saying exactly that there. Worked through a dozen of the Quiet Storm range on Saturday drinking one after the other and tasting the difference. It, that's exactly sort of why we do this. It uh, allows for you to be able to try the hops, try the flavors, and, you know, it sounds lame. Impress your friends. Why not? If you can pick out a hop from something and you go down the pub with your pals and you can name the hop each time, um, just something uh, quite exciting, I think, especially, in, and you do appreciate them more, especially the German ones starting to taste a little more like the American ones too, so... Um, quite a fun sort of hop in there as well to try, especially a more modern one as well. Um, and then, so I think we've actually quite busy at this summer, as always. I mentioned Pekenda a few times. Please make sure come along to Pekenda, come and see us. If you're coming by, I'll be there pretty much the entire weekend. We'll have all the rest of the team out and about throughout, be it at the tap room uh, in Bakewell, be it at the showground as well. Lots of great bands are just being announced at the minute. So um, you can find your tickets online. Otherwise, while you're there, come and see us too. So it's always nice to chat properly in person. I'll probably be running around in a high-vis vest somewhere around the site. So uh, make sure to stop me uh, and we'll have a nice chat there as well. Um, but other events, I think, Charlotte, you've got a few of them coming up for us at the moment. Uh, yeah, so the next few weekends we're out and about. Um, so this weekend we're pouring an outbreak and that's an event in Manchester. I think it's more of a music event um, and Brown Sheffield Run this weekend as well. Um, and then next weekend we're pouring at Rooster's Suds and Buds um, and a, an event called the Summer Beer Thing. That's next weekend. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Charlotte. As you said, I mentioned it is a busy weekend. We've just got back after Taste of London. The whole team's been working there, really, uh, really slaving away, getting it all done all weekend. It's been a fantastic one. Uh, they brought back lots of Guinness crisps as well, so I was pretty happy. There. So um, from the brewery at any of these fests, if you're at Suds and Buds, Suds with Buds, any of these ones, um, just 
come and say hello to us please do uh steve any special treats we will be uh coming to that a bit closer to the time as well don't worry we are uh getting on top of everything for peak Ender, but you will know about it first of course being tbc members too so um keep your emails peeled for that one um and then we've got a couple more beers sort of talk through but also again a couple of russell's favorites i know so russell please tell us a, a bit about the final two beers in the box this evening yeah yeah i've um I've, I've, you, you let me pick which is always good every month um but yeah i've gone with uh i've gone with freeman street first um this was uh a recipe from one of our brewers um over at uh in riverside um chris and he was really really like proud of it and as soon as it was as soon as it was cast and we had it on the bar and tap really kind of raced over and he wants to try it so we had it on cast um and obviously now it's in a can but um yeah us hopped um ipa there it is um six percent um so nice and chunky um I'm a, I tell everyone every single month, I'm a, you know, Jai pours my beer. I tell everyone that kind of says to me, oh, what do you go for? Jai pour all the time. But um, yeah, so Chinook and Centennial. So obviously I'm going to like this beer and then Citra as well. So uh, my go-to, the, the local down by me, he um, he rotates between Jai pour and Oakham Citra. Uh, we spoke about that earlier on. So I think he, he generally does that. I think, I think for me, I think I'm, I'm probably, you know, 50% of his trade, which I, I don't know, I think that says more about me than him. But um but yeah, so so really punchy bitter hops. Um, in terms of Freeman Street, the name, um, so it's named after a street, obviously New Jersey, uh, um, in Newark, America, and it was Ballantine's uh, Brewery over there that um, you know I think one of the first American IPAs to come out of that kind of region, I suppose. Um, they, they were brewing and, and kind of exporting all over the world. So it's, a, it's just a bit of a nod to them, to be honest, um, and quite a nice nod too. So, um, so yeah, quite dark in colour, I think, in terms of, um, you know, compared to some of, the, some of our other IPAs, classic IPAs, but it is slightly stronger too. Um, really, really kind of pineapple grapefruits lemons all on the nose and then kind of tasting it as well it's really really floral really punchy bitter I, I kind of get from it yeah yeah certainly different I think to the Solero and to uh and to, and to the other ones we've tried tonight as well so um but that being said I, I drank I just drank that power rider and all I could think about was it's really dangerous I was thinking you know that does not taste like a five point two. Everything tonight is over five. You know it's between five and six. You know it's a it's a big old box. But even this one as well is quite quite a dangerous beer because it doesn't quite taste like six percent. Um, and again, it's got that soft carbonation as well, so it's got that cask feel to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's gone down great. It's really really good. Um, it's worth noting as well that Freeman Street and the uh, the cash bar, there's apparently very little of it left. And whenever that happens in the brewery, I know it's a fantastic beer, and you know, get your hands on it while you can. Um, and if the you know if the brewers are taking it and, and they're drinking it, then I know it's great, and, and they all are. Yeah, no, it's been popular as you say already. That one, yeah, Freeman Street and Cashball uh, went that quick. You know, we do of course a, a batch of each and uh, went straight out. So you should see some kegs floating around as well. We'll have it in the tap room and elsewhere. Um, but I agree. And um, it's been very sort of American hop and even German hops descended from American hop heavy as well. So uh, it's quite a fun box for that sort of thing, certainly. And uh, glad you've been enjoying the Freeman Street. Did you have a food pairing for us, Russell? Or I don't want to put you on the spot, but I enjoy I've, I've got a food pairing for Freeman Street. I, can't, I don't know what it says in the book. I don't know. Don't 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 worry. I've got a I've got a, a, a beef taco, spicy beef taco to go with that bitter hopped uh beer really bitter gets you in the back of the right mm -hmm. in, the, in the back of the mouth so uh, yeah. yeah a nice spicy taco to kind of keep you drinking it and probably drinking it too fast as well but yeah i've got a bit of salad in there as well a bit of cucumber smart because you know we're all trying to lose weight for the summer i've been trying to lose weight for the summer since last summer but but yeah so uh spicy beef taco is, is the one it's a soft taco as well you know we're all it's the modern era now so it's for heater apps but yeah so uh, get into that if you can yeah, it's gone. It's gone cold now. I've been I've been playing for former Jeff C tonight, football as well. So my dinner's gone cold. I've, I've got five beers to get through. Oh, you know, it's, it's a perfect kind of night. This one, I might sack off dinner altogether. <laughs> well, thank you. I do. It's always good to hear them. We put them on the 
cans we put them in the booklet but um again it, it's such a fun you know beer and food together it works and it's always really interesting to hear the different takes and the different things on it as well that we do so uh, i appreciate you putting the effort in every time russell Absolutely. I'm, sure, I'm sure everyone else does as well um and then well, it's, it's funny you should sorry, say that russell. jim didn't appreciate me sticking an ice lolly in his last drink so um <laughs> I had an ear for them off, off, off that one, but it's not stopped me going, for, you know, for a slush machine for the summer and sticking a sour in that. We're still, we're still trying to plough ahead with that anyway for the tap room. Yeah, that's a festival favourite, to be fair. Exactly, yeah. We're festival. trying to combine two things, slushies, beer, alcohol, yeah. Yeah. That's the way forward. That's it. And we'll have some uh, pretty fun sort of sours and things coming up over the summer that will work nicely with that, I think, too. Great. Um, and then, so... I'll just mention quickly before we sort of get into the dessert and the end beer, uh, you may have seen on the email in uh, for July's box, it should all be in everyone's inbox. I know Charlotte's been working hard, uh, popping the emails together, sending them out, letting everyone know. Um, so if you haven't already, go and check your inboxes too. And July is, is in there as well. Again, as I'm biased, but it's always a great box. Um, but there are some, including one very exciting barrel aged beer in there, done in some English whiskey barrels too. So, um, yeah, please, uh, I hope everyone's excited for next month. We'll be back on July 20th to discuss it and talk about it then. But again, if you haven't had the full info yet, check your, your inboxes there. We've been making sure everyone's got it. Um, seeing from Mark, suddenly a bit peckish after hearing you pairing there, Russell. That's always a good sign. <laughs> That's how you know a good taproom manager there, making sure everyone's feeling hungry and thirsty as well. Um, and from that, we have our final sort of dessert beer as well, Russell. So please, I know you've been enjoying the Lucharia, so um, please tell us about it. Yeah, it's great. It's worth it's worth mentioning just just quickly about the tap room as well. I mean, please. we've obviously got our pizza offering on all the time at the moment. And those of you that have not managed to get down to the tap room, please try and get yourselves down there. Um, Steve, as in Steve with, with no surname next to his name, he has got he's kindly modelled one of our peak ender tops today. Really appreciate that, Steve. They're available in the tap room now, 1999, all different colours, all different sizes. Absolutely cracking. I love some of those badges behind it as well, Steve. There's some originals behind there I can see as well. It's, what a setup that is. But um, but yeah, we've got plenty of offers in on the tap room as well, um, from glassware to you know football tops, and um, we're selling ice cream at the moment in the tap room for the summer as well. Um, and it's getting busier and busier. So you know, if you if you get a chance to come down to a big old tin warehouse on the outskirts of Bakewell, you won't be disappointed. And some some people that join the call and, and that catch up with our YouTube as well, they can testify that is if you can get me, if you can pick me out, I will look after you. I can assure you of that. I can't say any more because McGaffer's on the line as well today. So, but I will look after you, okay? Um, but anyway, yeah, let's get into this um, Lucharia or Lucaria, however you I want to say. It. I'm not going to argue with anyone because I've been arguing with my staff today about it. Um, but yeah, really obviously dark in colour, ice cream porter. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Just like Thornbridge has brought this back, okay? You know, Cadbury's also brought back a Whisper Gold. Yeah, this is perfect with it. Chocolate and caramel goes perfectly with this uh, with this beer. So get yourselves one of these if you can. I'm not going to eat on screen. No one wants to see that. But yeah, um, yeah, it's fantastic. So um, Lucharia, uh, we did it with a, a pub called The Grove up in Huddlesfield. I think it's on Chapel Street. Um, but I've, I've been there and they do, I think it's 12 cask lines and 16 keg lines, all vice versa. I can't remember, but there's loads on there. And I think like you can get a pint of dry pour for like £4.50. It's ridiculous, but it's hard as well. Anyway, if, you, if you're local to there, get yourself up there. It's um, it's really good. Um, what, what can you get from it? Kind of like coffee, salt with caramel. Yeah, uh, kind of a red, red wine linger as well, but... Yeah, quite bitter, not too sweet, um, really drinkable. Um, for those of you that like the Pardis range, then this is right up your street as well. I'm not sure, James, if there if there's any more of this range coming out in terms of uh, the different flavours or not. We have actually, we did the salted caramel version in small pack a bit ago, uh, and certainly never say never, because we have the wide variety in cask a lot of the time. So um, this one's already gone off to a good start, just being packaged into can as well. So uh, yeah, if everyone yeah. keeps telling us how much they love it, then... We can go and talk to Dom as well and uh, let him know. So, yeah. So we, um, so yeah, it was brewed in collaboration with the Grove, 
Uchari, if anyone that's not read the canon of the book, is um, uh, a Roman festival um, called The Grove. But um, we've got it on the cast coming up in the tap room and it'll be on this weekend. Um, I'm not sure when we'll be able to put it on. It might be tomorrow night. It could be midway through Saturday. Um, but once it goes on, it's going to fly. So if you can get yourself down for a cast pint of Lucaria, um, it's well worth it. Um, and I, won't, I can't say I'll be giving out free Whisper Golds, um, but I can do my best to kind of get some in there for those that want to come, come down and... I mentioned that they've seen us on here. So, um, so yeah, but really, really good. And a bit more sessionable at 6% as well. You can probably get through two of those in an evening as opposed to um, sharing a Pardis or even, a, you know, one of our barrel age necessary evils. Yeah, Alad's uh, trying to get you in trouble there as well, telling you to dip it in the beer too, so. <laughs> yeah, honestly, the, it, it will get back to uh, <laughs> Jim and Simon and Thornbridge. So, uh <laughs> Uh, and, and I wouldn't do it anyway. I mean, I'm not saying I, w I would do it if Don wasn't on on the call. But you know, I mean, if you can get yourselves on, you know, get yourselves a good whisper gold, then you can all do it for yourself. But yeah, I just uh, I, I need the money at the moment. I need the job, so you know, I can't. But, <laughs> but thanks. You know, you've got Tom's bought himself a whisper gold already. Um, saying perfect timing. So yeah, it is. Go and try dip it in. Uh, Michael, cask on in the Como. Um, yeah, it's part of the year of beer range, Michael. So um, they will get some. So the Como, all our other pubs, the tap room as well, of course, um, they'll all get those beers uh, automatically. You know, they're always the first people to. So you will. Uh, oh, Tom, informed last night they've got a cask of it already. Should be on next week. Thank you, Tom. Um, yeah, so it's coming your way. Don't worry. It tastes really good in cask. It's one of those ranges we found especially with these nice big dark beers that really works across all the different formats um and this one as russell mentioned you know we brewed it the first time with the grove pub uh, and then really inspired the series of ice cream porters from there as well um to four and a half with the sort of flavors so from doing the strawberry uh, i mentioned about the salted caramel all the different ones as well but then it was great to just go back to the og itself the big six percent just the kind of more vanilla -y, just the classic ice cream porter flavor there too. So um, yeah, if you do see it on cask, definitely go and get some, make sure you try it as well. Um, and so, yeah. And was there any other thoughts you had on it at all, Russell, while um, we're talking? I was, I was about to say vanilla, to be honest, James, just before you said it, but yeah, you get that real vanilla with it. But um, but no, um, just, you know, in general with, with um, kind of where we are in Bacon and the Tap Room, if you can get it online and you're a bit too far away, great. But if you can get yourselves down to the tap room, it's well worth a trip out for the day or even kind of, the, you know, the weekend or a couple of days. Um, you know, you'll get to speak to someone in there that's, uh, it might not necessarily be me, but someone that's really interested in their beer, someone that can really kind of, you know, hone their kind of uh, taste into what you like as well. So it's, it's worth a trip. Um, and we've got the Thormage experience as well. So for £15 a person, you can, you can try six of our beers. Um, you can get kind of a detailed experience on how we kind of go through the brewing process uh, and the history of Thornbridge and where we are today as well. So it's worth a day out. Yeah, and I've, I've just, I mean, I've just been on annual leave myself and I've, I've probably, I've just done a trip around, you know, the north, northwest and the northeast. And I've just been visiting different breweries and different tap rooms. I've even been to breweries that don't have tap rooms, so I don't research them very well. Um, so we're always looking at new ideas and what other people are doing and, you know, what we can do to, to be better as well. So, but predominantly in our mindset at the moment is just making sure the customer experience, you know, if you want to come in and you want some of our knowledge or you want to try some bids, that's what we're there to do. So, uh, we're there to kind of, uh, make sure that you're always buying from Yeah. Hey, that's it. Exactly. But, uh, and giving that good experience too, as well. Absolutely. Yeah um michael there had a on cask as well six years ago it must have been memorable if you still remember having it there so i'm pleased but um yeah there's certainly fresher ones coming out so don't worry about that um but that then takes us through the beers for the evening as well as i say please do join us again in july uh we won't be stopping at six percent we'll be going quite a bit stronger with the next necessary evil release as well um so please you know again in the meantime let us know on socials anything like that how you're tasting the beers drop us an email uh but then please do come back next month and we'll still be talking about peak Ender then as well of course so um check out all the info it's gone we've updated all the websites so you've got the breweries you've got the lineups coming up as well now too so um hopefully we'll see you there and well of course we'll see you on here first too so uh thank you to jim as well 
Will for taking the time to come on and enjoy Glastonbury tomorrow. Thank you, Wilf, as well. Much appreciated hearing all about the brewery and the history of it too. Um, cheers to Russell and Charlotte for going through the beers, the events and everything as well. And thanks for joining us too, Dom. So thank you mainly to everyone else as well. Hope you all have a great rest of your evening. Hopefully all this rain's getting rid of and we're back to sunshine soon too now because I'm pretty done with the rain. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy your beers. Have a great evening. Uh, thank you all very much. So cheers, guys. Good night.